Hello, my name is Roman Nuchik. I'm senior malware analyst at Kaspersky Lab. And today I'd like to talk about security issues in wearable devices. Mostly I'm interested in wristbands. Um, this story started a few months ago when I bought my Jabon, Jabon app. Uh, it's a wearable device, right? So I installed Android Wear app. Uh, um, it's a special app available from Google Play Store created uh, for wearable devices. It found and connected to the wristband without any problem. Uh, but I was a little bit surprised because uh, my band is Jabon, while Android Wear app connected to Nike Fuel Band. Interesting thing that this Nike Fuel Band belongs to the VAS he was presenting just before me. Uh, the funny thing is that when I connected to his device, he didn't notice it at all. I just needed an official app from Google to do it. So I decided to dig deeper into fitness trackers. Uh, first of all, I tell you about, uh, I tell you which uh, devices are popular now. Uh, then I tell you about uh, what technologies they use and what security issues they contain. And finally, I show you a demonstration how, uh, on a real wristband, how its sensification can be faked. Uh, so, oh, it's bad. Um, okay, so for the beginning, I used Kaspersky Security Network to find uh, statistics about wristbands. It allowed me to find um, a popularity of Android apps for different wristbands, and uh, with over 100,000 results, there, this was the foremost popular wristbands. Um, it was Nike Fell Band with less than 1%, Jabon with 2%. Uh, Garmin app with 5% and uh, Fitbit Mobile with more than 90%. It's uh, an application for all Fitbit fitness trackers. All of them, except Nike, use Bluetooth LE, also known as Bluetooth Smart. What is Bluetooth LE? Uh, it is a Bluetooth 4.0 specification with a generic attribute profile based architecture, also known as GET. What does GET mean? It means that uh, communication between device, devices uh, will go in a different way than in traditional Bluetooth. Uh, in this case, there should be two functionally different devices. Uh, one device, usually phone, connected to the another device, uh, usually wearable device. Uh, this second device uh, will contain several services. Each service uh, will contain uh, several characteristics. Every characteristic contains readable and writable byte buffer and a, key value and a list of key value descriptors. Uh, to better illustrate this, I found an example in Android SDK. I didn't need to write any code for it. I just opened already provided example, uh, already provided project in Android Studio and press one button, start. It was that easy. Uh, it allows me to connect to Bluetooth LE devices. Uh, in this example, you can see MAC address of my job on its services and characteristics. For some wristbands, this app allows to fetch even user data. Uh, so it's uh, how services and characteristics looks like at Jabon. Uh, every single Jabon will have just the same ser uh, GUIs for its services and characteristics. And here is an example of Fitbit Force. Uh, as we can see, it has uh, different GUIs for services and characteristics. Um, so, Android, uh, so exam an example app from Android SDK allows me to connect to different uh, Bluetooth LE devices. So I decided to build my own scan tool. It was very easy. In top block of code, you can see a scanning method. Um, this method will be called every 10 seconds. If it find any device, uh, the method uh, LE scan callback will be called. In this method, I will try to connect to the Bluetooth device. Uh, uh, if connection was successful, I will try to discover services on this device. Um, when I will be able to discover services, I can list all of the services, list its uh, characteristics and descriptors. Uh, I even can read uh, their buffers which will contain user data. Before I show you results of my scans, I would like to highlight a few things about Bluetooth LE. First of all, the usual distance for communication uh, for Bluetooth LE devices uh, about 20 feet or 6 meters. Uh, the second thing is that 
you cannot connect to the paired device. It means that once you paired your wristband with your phone, no one could shoot could should have possibility to connect to your device. It even shouldn't be visible during scan. Uh, when I found this limitation, I become sad because you know it means that it's almost impossible to hack any device. Uh, but as usual, reality is different from specifications, and here's an example of reality. Using my scanning app, I was able to block communication between my Jabon and the Jabon app. app. Um, they were paired before it, but I just installed my scanning app and it blocked all the communications. So let's go to the uh, scan results. Uh, first scan I made uh, during a half an hour walk in the Bellevue downtown. There were six devices, four of them were Fitbit, one uh, Jabon, and one Nike. It's not a big count, right? But it's some. Um, after it, I thought, where can I find uh, lots of people with fitness trackers, of course in fitness club. So, let's go to the fitness club. Since I couldn't find anything better to do in a Saturday evening, I spent an hour all alone uh, in a fitness club, and during this hour I was able to connect to 25 devices. 20 of them were Fitbit and one of each other of wristband types. Uh, Jabon, Nike, Polar, Microsoft, and Quance. Uh, uh, so, with my Saturday night, night wasted, I was finally happy with my results. Uh, although I was able to connect to 25 wristbands, there were 100 Bluetooth-capable Bluetooth devices available for connection. 39 of them were unknown. They didn't return uh, to my scan app their names, and I weren't able to find their manufacturers by MAC addresses. 31 of them were Apple devices, I think they should be iPhones. And the last quarter of the pie chart, it's uh, wearable devices from the previous slide. I also scanned in Moscow underground subway system. Interesting thing number two, during two hours in Moscow underground, I was able to connect almost to the same count uh, of wristbands like in fitness club in Bellevue. It's uh, 19 versus 25. Interesting thing number two is that in Moscow, Jabon is much more popular than in Bellevue. It's almost as popular as Fitbit. There were eight Jabons and 11 Fitbits, and no Nike bands. Uh, I also made this scan here at uh, SAS 2015. I was able to connect to 10 devices during two hours in yesterday morning on the presentations, just sitting in the room. Uh, three of them were Jabons, and seven of them were Fitbits. I didn't fetch any user data, it's some sort of just connection, just checking possibility. So let's go to technologies, and let's begin with a brief look at Jabon. It was it built on motion X sensor created by the full power company. Uh, this sensor, uh, yeah, just the same uh, sensor Nike Full Band use. Uh, this center con uh, sensor contains a Bluetooth component and uh, accelerometer. The Jabon has two lights, as can be seen in the center of the slide, and it has the one button. It's the silver end of the Jabon. It's pretty simple, right? Uh, and here's the scheme how it works. The Jabon communicates uh, with the official app using Bluetooth. The official app uploads user information, such as uh, steps and slip, slip phases, to the developer server. Uh, they have uh, an API that allows third-party developers to create their own websites, create their own apps and extensions uh, for the official app. But even extensions for the official, for official app cannot communicate with the Jabon directly. They should use data already stored in the uh, Jabon's servers. Uh, so we decided to learn more about this web API, so I find an example on the job on site. It's a JSON file, contains some user information like uh, latitude and longitude coordinates, timestamp, and resting heart rate. Uh, it seems like very sensitive information. Uh, I don't know, I don't want to know, uh, I don't know, well, I don't want uh, someone to know where I was and at what time. Uh, let alone my heart rate. Uh, for these reasons, Jabons has, have several rules uh, for this web API. First of all, 
a user should allow third-party developers to get access to his data. Um, second thing that they use OAuth 2.0 protocol for authentication. And all re requests and responses going through the SSL. It looks like they thought a lot about security in this case, and it, it's paid off. So what looks like a least secure part of the job on, it's a Bluetooth authentication. And I will investigate here. It's a parsed output of the Jabon, of the authentication between Jabon app and Jabon itself. Uh, as you can see, it's doing just the same thing like uh, my scan app. It starts scan, searching for devices, connect to the device, uh, uh, discover services on it, try to connect to services, uh, get characteristic, and so on. Um, but the official app start, starts to differ here. After it works, Jabon start to vibrate, and the official app will say to user, press the button to finish the, if your Jabon vibrate, press the button to finish the authentication. So I analyzed uh, this app to find out the way how it makes uh, Jabon to vibrate. Uh, first of all, they use only one service. Uh, they do not list all of this, uh, they do not fetch all services, they use only one, which GUIDs is already hard-coded in the app. Then they list all characteristics for this service and doing just the two, just the two things. First of all, they set a characteristic notification flag. That means that the app would like to receive all uh, notifications uh, about changing of this characteristic. And then they list all descriptors for this characteristic and set an enable notification flag for every uh, descriptor. It means that the app would like to receive all changes of this descriptor. Then doing just the same uh, thing for all of three characteristics. And just a reminder how, um, just a reminder how uh, services and characteristics looks like at the job on. Uh, as you can see, they use only one service, service three. Um, after these manipulations, uh, one characteristic will change. Um, the app, of course, receive notification about these changes and will be able to read some data. It will be byte array starting with 20 OAF, 1F, and then some bytes. Let's call these bytes house bytes. Uh, then they can concatenate um, the hard-coded seed starting with 6, D, C, and so on uh, with these house bytes and calculating MD5. Uh, then they, they create a new array starting with the header 20, 12, 10, and so on. MD5, uh, calculated, already calculated MD5, and check byte. And write this uh, bytes uh, to characteristic, which, which means that they send these bytes uh, to the wristband. Then they send one more uh, array, hard-coded array, EC, 20, and so on, uh, to the wristband. After these steps, the Jabon will vibrate. After the step, Jabon will vibrate and wait the user to press the button to finish the authentication. It means that everyone can simply pair with this Jabon, with any Jabon app, uh, because of two security issues. Uh, first of all, a Bluetooth LED device is available for connection even when they shouldn't be. Uh, the second problem is in Jabon. Um, in, it's in Jabon authentication process. Uh, you know, anyone can just uh, make just the same steps and connect to a device uh, and start continuously vibrating it, continuously re-authenticating and annoying user. And user will have to press the button or run away. Um, so, I'll show you a demonstration uh, how it can be done. The original app uh, need about 15 seconds to authenticate uh, to start Jabon vibrating, uh, but my proof and concept uh, usually needs something like about four seconds. So at this moment, uh, hmm, strange. okay. In this moment, uh, there is only step uh, between uh, only step for, for until the full hack of this device. We should. Uh, the user should press the button to finish the authentication. It can, can be done very easily. In my 
proof of concept, I restart the authentication uh, process every four seconds. So um, usually, Jabon start vibrating every four seconds, and it's very annoying. And the only thing that user can do, can, can do is press this button. After authentication finished, um, commands will, can be executed very easily. The app just needs uh, to send a byte array to this device. Um, it's not encrypted data, it's just, uh, yeah, real, just, just bytes, uh, right to characteristics, and the device will change uh, its time. Uh, so, as I just mentioned, the authentication can be done very easily, and then uh, anyone can execute commands without any problems. Right now, criminals cannot steal lots of data from these devices. Um, they cannot erase all data because all data are stored in the cloud. They cannot even steal coordinates because uh, coordinates uh, generated by the app uh, on the phone. Um, <coughs> talking generally about uh, wristbands, right now criminals can steal only uh, step count and uh, health rate for the last hour, something like it. And it can be done without any user knowledge. His uh, band just start, start vibrating, he press a button, everything okay. Everything looks like okay. Just imagine, a story owner can uh, look how you look at, uh, at the sales. Anyone can know what you feel when you watch advertise. Um, anyone can even say if you're lying to him or saying true, or saying true just checking your heart rate. It's pretty scary, right? Uh, so, talking about Jabon, there is a very, very easy fix for it. Uh, they, uh, they just need to change the authentication process. Uh, the device should be available for pairing only after user press the button, not before. You know, it looks like uh, the Jabon de developers thought about it, because when you uh, start pairing your device with your phone, your phone will say you press the button uh, to make the job on visible for parent. But you do not need to do it. It's already visible for parent. Uh, so these devices become more popular. They contain more sensors. Uh, they, very soon they could have all your health information. But it doesn't look like uh, manufacturers thought about security uh, of their devices. I hope they will change their position about security very uh, yeah, or they have to do it after, you uh, know, privacy scares and bad publicity. I think that's all. One more case I can uh, explain how it can be used. Uh, we heard to, uh, yesterday about infection of hard drives where some like commands for backdoors were stored on the hard drive. But not anyone used just the same hard drive uh, in their work and their home. But... People, if, we're, if he wearing, if someone wearing job on, he will took it everywhere, and it's everywhere will be connect, uh, will be available for connection and for written write data in it. So it can be some slide. It can move comments. <laughs> so I think that's all. Um, questions? Thank you. No? Uh, deja vu.